What's up guys, welcome back to another video. One interesting semi-reoccurring question I get on Instagram is how do I balance bodybuilding with jiu-jitsu? These two arts, we can consider bodybuilding an art, and obviously jiu-jitsu is a martial art, don't necessarily complement each other. If you're familiar with both, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The art of bodybuilding is focused around looking as good as possible on stage. It's not really an athletic event. It doesn't focus on how much you can bench or how much you can squat. All that matters is that you look good. Your muscles are full, your muscles are big, your muscles are ripped, defined, detailed. Whereas physical performance in jiu-jitsu is important. Now, if you're familiar with jiu-jitsu, you know that technique over power and strength is the dominating idea here. But being strong and powerful in jiu-jitsu can be used as a tool of advantage. With these two, there isn't much crossover because bodybuilding, you wanna be as big as possible, whereas jiu-jitsu, you wanna be as efficient as possible. And sometimes having really big thick legs isn't advantageous for getting into certain positions of submission, like the triangle or even some leg lock entries. Having really big legs that fit through tiny spaces is not advantageous, especially if you're only focusing on making your legs bigger instead of powerful. So with those quick examples, you could see how these two arts, these two practices butt heads. But with a little bit of finesse, a little bit of practicality, and a little bit of common sense, you can mesh them quite nicely. Now the way I determine how I prioritize my training, whether that be more jiu-jitsu or more bodybuilding just really depends on my goals. If I'm looking to compete in jiu-jitsu and I need to get my performance up, I tend to train, whether that's weightlifting or jiu-jitsu, I typically only give myself one day off. Sometimes two if I really, really need it. But for the most part, I'm lifting five to six days a week and currently my goal is to hit jiu-jitsu four to five times a week. And that last training in jiu-jitsu will be on a day that I'm taking a break from the gym. Essentially six days a week, I will be training Four of those days will be bodybuilding and jiu-jitsu. This current training split is based upon the idea that I'm not competing anytime soon. The last time I competed was 2019, right before my spine injury, back at the IBJJF Chicago Open Championships, where I competed in a 21-man light heavyweight bracket as a white belt. Ended up taking third place. I lost my last match to points, and it was a crazy cool experience. I ended up getting promoted to blue belt on the podium unforgettable. But that was the last time I competed. So as of right now, this current training split is based upon the idea that I don't have any upcoming competitions. So with that being said, I can focus more on bodybuilding a little bit. I like to perform well, but I also like to look good. I want my muscles to have shape. I want to be defined. I want to have an aesthetic physique. So if I don't have a competition on the horizon, I can put a little more focus on bodybuilding. Now, where this all changes is when I sign up for a competition. Once I sign up for a competition, I'm going to pull back on the bodybuilding probably by a day or two. And I'm gonna add a day or two into jiu-jitsu. So these roles will flip. I'll be doing jiu-jitsu ideally up to six days a week. That'll look like three days of hard drilling, three days of hard sparring, and I'll be mixing in technique throughout the week. And while I'm doing that, I'll be training bodybuilding four times a week. Another change that's gonna take place with my weightlifting program will be that I will move from the eight to 12 rep range up to about the 20 rep range. This will help increase my muscular stamina. There's nothing worse than burning out on the mats, especially when you're in a tournament, especially when you're at a competition when your adrenaline is running high and you have that tendency to burn out quickly. If you're training your muscles in an eight to 10 rep range, they are not conditioned for that fight. You need to be a little bit closer to about 20 reps. My all time favorite jujitsu fighter that does this is Gordon Ryan. And obviously the guy <laughs> doesn't lose. He knows what he's talking about. He also trains when he has a competition coming up in the rep range of around 20 reps. And I really like this. I do notice a big difference. Now I lose a little bit of volume to my muscles, but I gain a lot more stamina, which is what you want if you're gonna be fighting on the mats. If you're a bodybuilder who's new to jiu-jitsu, you're probably going to notice that you're going to lose a little bit of weight and a little bit of muscle size, and this is fine. Technically, what you're adding in is a lot more cardio. You're not training the same muscle fibers that you are when you're in the gym. Depending on the rep range you're using, you're probably only focusing on your fast twitch muscle fibers in the gym because you're trying to get bigger. Whereas in jiu-jitsu, you're gonna be hitting slow twitch, fast twitch, medium twitch, you're hitting everything. You need all of it in jiu-jitsu. You need to have good muscular endurance. You also need to have the fast twitch muscle fibers when you're setting up positions, when you're getting to positions, when you're getting to submissions. And you need your medium twitch for everything in between. I've been training jiu-jitsu for a little over six years and I see all different kinds of guys and girls come and go. Some of the ones that come and go the most are the bodybuilder type. So what's interesting is they come in, they look big and strong. But when you get them in a situation where jiu-jitsu is the name of the game, they don't feel so strong, right? And that's because they work their muscles only in a certain range or trajectory of motion. He may be very strong in a 
head-to-head -head scenario, but as soon as you start taking their bodies laterally, they feel very weak. And there's a lot of attack patterns that you can do from a lateral position. I find that people who train CrossFit tend to feel a little bit stronger on the mats because they do a lot more compound movement stuff and their stamina tends to be a little bit better. Bodybuilders, without any kind of jujitsu training, burn out quite easily and they don't feel as strong as they look. And this is one of the main reasons why I love jujitsu so much, because it really is eye-opening to see how strong certain body types are. And you really begin to realize that these big muscular guys aren't as scary as you might think they are, especially when they don't know how to manipulate their own body weight, let alone another person's body weight. The strongest looking guys normally aren't the strongest guys. It's normally the smaller wiry guy that's really technical and knows how to take advantage of certain bodily positions. And for this reason, this is exactly why I mix functional training into my jujitsu and into my weightlifting program. If you're not familiar with functional training, it's exercise that helps you perform activities in daily life more easily. If you follow me on Instagram, you're familiar with the fact that I do train with a 500 pound tire and a 20 pound sledgehammer. Now this is great for functional training because I can do tire flips, tire rolls, I can do hammer tire workouts with a hammer hitting the tire, all of this working on the exact kind of muscle fibers I'm going to need in jujitsu to be successful. Also while working on stamina. I tend to stay away from running mainly because I have knee issues. I don't have any meniscus in my right knee and my left meniscus is torn. So I'm not trying to make that any worse than it needs to be. Hammer tire workouts are an excellent replacement for that. I have to say that nothing gets my heart rate up like a good hammer tire workout. I really like to do three sets of 25 hits each side. So what that looks like is that I'll be hitting the tire 25 times with my left hand forward and then 25 times with my right hand forward. And that's one set. And I do that three times. And I consider this car now, there are very few types of cardio that actually make me feel like I'm adding performance value to my jiu-jitsu cardio. The few that I can think of that are actually effective will be doing the act in itself. So actually training, actually sparring, drilling, these kind of things add to my jiu-jitsu cardio. The two other things that add benefit to my jiu-jitsu performance and cardio would be climbing on my climber and the hammer tire workouts. And when I combine all three, it gives me a very clear advantage over my opponent. I feel that my stamina just doesn't quit. I can roll for an hour, I can have 10 matches and feel like I can do more. I'll tend to focus on low intensity, steady state cardio for my climber, and I tend to focus more of like a hit style workout when I'm using my hammer and tire. So when I combine functional training with jujitsu training, with bodybuilding training, the end product is more of a jujitsu fighter that's a little more muscular than normal, but not necessarily muscular enough to be a bodybuilder. But this person also has great cardio, great stamina, great functional fitness. And for me, personally, that's why I like to run this balancing act. I want to look good, I want to perform well in jiu-jitsu, and I want to have great functional strength. Because I said before, it's very clear if someone is functionally strong when you get into a hand-to-hand -hand confrontation with somebody, even outside of jiu-jitsu. If you get into an altercation, you're gonna be able to tell pretty quickly if the person you're facing is strong or not. Now in the jiu-jitsu world, especially the competition side, most of your opponents are gonna be strong regardless. But if you can get to a point where you're so functionally strong that your opponent grabs onto you and they feel that strength, you can also use that tool as a psychological weapon because I want my opponent to feel intimidated. When they grab onto me and they feel how strong I am, I want them to be like, oh shit, this guy is strong as hell. And this kind of strength does not come from bodybuilding training. You're gonna get this kind of strength from jujitsu and functional fitness. When it comes to finding your balance with jujitsu, bodybuilding, and whatever else it is you're doing, it really depends on what your goals are. If you're not competing in jujitsu, you can focus on weightlifting and bodybuilding and get your body to a point where you're happy with how it looks while still training jujitsu in the background. For me, as a white belt, when I first started, I needed three days a week to retain the knowledge I was seeing and learning. Now, I don't like to drop under two days a week of jujitsu training training, mainly because I want to maintain that stamina that comes with that training. But if you decide that you want to compete in jiu-jitsu, you can ramp it up and go five or six days a week to jiu-jitsu while dialing back the bodybuilding. Because really, bodybuilding isn't necessarily going to help you in jiu-jitsu. If you want to get stronger in jiu-jitsu, start implementing functional fitness a day or two a week, right? You could do two bodybuilding workouts, two functional fitness workouts. You could also do something like four bodybuilding workouts a week, and then you could do a functional fitness finisher, like a hammer tire workout, knock out 10 to 15 minutes of that type of hit style cardio at the end, at the back end of your workout. Now, once you have your attack plan together, it's gonna be really important to 
listen to your body. You're gonna wanna listen to your aches and pains. You wanna make sure you're not overtraining. Overtraining is really hard to do, but if you do get to that point, I've been there, you're gonna get all kinds of different joint pains, lots of elbow pain, lots of shoulder pain. You're gonna feel tired and worn down. And to a point, you wanna push through this stuff and be strong and dig deep, but you'll know your body will tell you straight up if you're going too hard. And again, it really comes down to how far you wanna push, what your goals are. Are you competing? Is your competition coming up? Do you need to push through this stuff? Do you need to push through this pain? Or can you dial it back and rest a little bit? As long as you're moving forward, realizing that bodybuilding does not complement jujitsu, and jujitsu does not complement bodybuilding, you can formulate an attack plan where you find balance and find the results that you wanna find. And I think by adding in functional training is a great way to check a lot of the boxes that you're probably searching for. You're also gonna to wanna to make sure you're getting enough rest. Six to eight hours of sleep a night is gonna be super important. If people really understood how important sleep is, they would truly make it a priority to get more. This is one of the things I struggle with most. I know how important sleep is, and I still struggle with it. But I make it a priority and I at least aim for six hours a night. If you can get eight, that's even better. And the last tip I would say outside of you know eating your protein and being in a good caloric range would be to stay hydrated. You should be drinking three to four liters of water a day, especially if you're doing bodybuilding, functional fitness, and jujitsu. Jujitsu being a big one because you're gonna sweat. Whether you're training in a gi, I always sweat more in a gi, but even in no gi, I sweat a lot. So you're gonna need to make sure you're staying hydrated. I can't stress how important this is being that we're made up of about 70% water. So I think you can see why that needs to be a priority. Everything from your organ health to all the process that happen in your body are going to be more efficient. Not to mention you're gonna look better. Your cells are gonna be more full in your face. You're gonna have less wrinkles. You're gonna appear more youthful. Staying hydrated really is a cheat code and a lot of people don't put enough emphasis on that. At the end of the day, I don't want you to have any unrealistic expectations when it comes to bodybuilding and jujitsu. As a bodybuilder, jujitsu isn't gonna make you a better bodybuilder. And as a jujitsu fighter, bodybuilding isn't gonna make you a better jujitsu fighter. So as long as you approach these two endeavors, if you're gonna be combining them with that in mind, you can use some good common sense, some practicality to mesh them into seeing the results you want to see. Now, if your focus is truly to be just as big and hulking and ripped as possible, then bodybuilding should be your only focus. Now, on the flip side, if your goal is to become the best fighter you can possibly be, focusing on just jujitsu is going to be what you want to do. But if you want to be a good fighter and you want to look good shirtless, for whatever reason that may be, whatever your choice is, it's your choice. Just know that certain action will be required to reach adequate levels of performance in each one. For me, I was introduced to bodybuilding and grappling right around the age of 13 to 14 years old. So both of these arts are embedded into my foundation and I don't have any desire to exclude one or the other. I'd rather just mesh them together the best I can and become the best I can at each one using practical, sustainable training methods. And that's the video. I hope you guys got something out of it. Just remember, you can do whatever it is that you wanna do, but you need to be consistent. You need to take your effort and apply it each and every day. And sometimes we take two steps backward to take one step forward. Sometimes it's like that, whether that's injuries, ringworm, whatever the case is, you can't stop. You have to keep going and you have to keep going and you have to do it for the long term. That's where the best results are. Everyone wants to know, how do you get better at jujitsu? How do I get in better shape? You keep doing it and you do it for the long run consistently. So with that being said, you know how we end them. Eat plants, train hard, and feel good. And I'll see you in the next one.